something that's annoying. I've gotten the odd one or two comments of people accusing me of trying to be Kelly Stamps. One or two people in the comments of my transformation video were like, just be yourself. This is so unoriginal. I've been being myself in every other video that I've made. It was just a transformation video. Who cares? I stopped watching her. I unsubscribed. I unfollowed her on Instagram. And the reason is because I was jealous of her. Welcome or welcome back to my second channel where I talk about whatever the hell I want and find interesting. Today I'll be doing a bit of commentary reaction, whatever you want to call it, on the controversial video Jenna Brown put out, why I stopped watching Kelly Stamps. So I'm going to share why I stopped watching Jenna Brown. I haven't really watched too many videos regarding this, but I thought it'd be cool to give a perspective from someone who actually used to kind of watch Jenna Brown. So let it go. Jenna Brown, like most people on YouTube, have been writing Kelly Stamp's spatula and plastering her face and name on their thumbnails for the longest now. There are a thousand and one videos talking about how she blew up on YouTube and I'm just like, we know, we know. she blew, she up, blew on up on YouTube, YouTube. can we can move, we move on, on now? It's all a part of her world domination, so I ain't mad at it. But when most videos are titled like this, it's because the content creator has done something problematic or have become lazy with their content. Kelly Sam's videos are no longer getting recommended to me unless I actively search for her, and you know YouTube's notifications have been fucked up for the longest now. Even with your notifications on, you don't get notifications when someone posts a video like we used to back in the day. And the title of your video leads you to believe something negative happened to Kelly Stamps and because I haven't watched her in a minute, it kind of alarmed me, but also confused me because how did someone go from fan to cosplayer to hater so fast? Because she was hating from the jump, and I'm gonna get into it, but let me break down how I even caught wind of this video, because I've been unsubscribed for the longest now. So while minding my business, I was recommended this video by YouTuber Sherry. Um, her channel's called My Humble Review, and which she shared her thoughts on Jenna's video, the kind words she shared with her, and personal stories on how she herself can relate to being jealous of others, with of course the lesson of how we shouldn't compare ourselves to others. She shared personal stories that I'm sorry she had to go through concerning past relationships and situations she could have prevented had she not gone out of her way seeking a relationship unconventionally, all because she envied the relationship she saw from others. I will link her video down below if you'd like to hear her story and opinions, but I'd also like to say, Sherry, that it's not your fault that those things happen to you. It kind of hurt me when she mentioned having to take an L on a situation, which I totally get. Like, we've all been there before, like, damn, bruh, if I would never did such and such, this would never happen to me. But, I mean, it's okay to take accountability and trace where you went wrong to prevent putting yourself in that situation again. But when it comes to being taken advantage of, the blame should never be on yourself, the victim, and always on the abuser. In the beginning of Sherry's video, um, the way she summarized Jenna Brown's video gave me the impression that, damn bro, like, I guess she was going through it and was being really open and vulnerable, but then when you actually watch her video, Jenna's video, there's a bit of a disconnect because while what Sherry said was true, she, she was still operating in jealousy throughout the video. It gave... I'm jealous and insecure, but here are other YouTubers I'm not jealous of, but technically should be because they all have something that I don't like Kelly Stamps, but for whatever reason, I'm not. Like, why are you jealous of a fellow black girl, but not other races doing the same? Like, that's what really threw me for a loop. Like Elise Eklund, I've been watching her for two years now and she recently got married and I was so happy for her. Not an ounce of jealousy. Alia Zaita, she's a lifestyle YouTuber. She does lots of vlogs and stuff. She's my age. She just turned 22. She lives in Seattle. She just moved to a bigger apartment and she lives with her boyfriend Yoni. Not an ounce of jealousy. I think Kelly Stamps is great. I only discovered her 
a few weeks ago, but I love her content. And I'm glad people associate me with someone like her as opposed to someone problematic. I think everyone should aspire to be like Kelly Stamps. Stamp, 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 stamp. <laughs> Alright, let me stop playing, but alright, let's travel back in time. Remember when YouTube became a ghost town when the world was on quarantine around April or May of 2020? Many content creators deserted YouTube, especially black content creators, and they saw other platforms like TikTok because it was more enjoyable, less work, and gave them more time to explore other avenues of interest, especially when YouTube wasn't pushing them or gave recognition. It gave smaller content creators and newbies a chance to shine. The algorithm was all messed up at this point. People were getting recommended random ass videos since everyone stopped posting, and I happened to stumble upon Jenna Brown and Kelly Stamps around the same time. I saw some vlogs from Kelly and loved seeing a regular black girl doing regular things with a similar personality as mine and people I actually know. Especially around the time of the Black Lives Matters protests, it was a nice escape mentally. I mean, being subjugated to seeing our people getting mistreated every day, it, it was just unbearable and exhausting. After shifting through vlogs, Kelly later released one of her most well-known videos that inspired me to create my channel. Or two. <laughs> Shameless plug, make sure to follow my main channel. Thank you. You need to start a YouTube channel. Here's why. During quarantine, coupled with the fact that I was unemployed at the time and was trying to find any way to make some income while waiting on unemployment, I began trying out YouTube and learning and doing things I hadn't done before or always wanted Hobbies. to do. Everyone needs to have fun. So I was getting interested in books again and realized, damn, like I never got into Wattpad when I was younger and everyone raved about them. So I decided to give it a try. Heads up. It didn't work out. Like what? How do you operate that app? Like what's going on? And then you got to pay for it. Huh? <laughs> but yeah, I tried it. I, I tried to give it a try and I got caught up in 1D fan fiction, which is kind of funny, like, what? And then I started getting recommended Jenna Just Brown. Just like Kelly, what attracted me to her channel was her familiarity because I know awkward people just like her and I'm quote unquote awkward myself and tend to be introverted and Jenna specifically reminded me of an old sister sister friend because they had the same, you know, demeanor, mannerisms and was naturally funny without trying to be. Before quarantine, I was struggling with anxiety and depression, and it was comforting seeing people like me and old friends. You know, sometimes I dwell on the past and they reminded me of some cherished memories. Hello and welcome back to the place where I sleep at night. Yes, God, back when her intros used to be like this. But yeah, I thought they were comparable by their demeanor and way of speaking. I don't know how many times I'm going to keep saying that, but once Jenna caught wind of that, it was almost like she became obsessed with Kelly and wanted to be her. People saying that I sound like, or I remind them of, YouTube sensation Kelly Stamps. And I really don't blame them. She started using her name for clickbait like everyone else, and this is why I unsubscribed from Jenna Brown. She made what feels like to be so many videos about Kelly Stamps in a short amount of time, especially with them being recommended more than the other content she would make. I felt like I was watching a disturbed fan of Kelly instead of learning who Jenna Brown was. Obsessed. And I hate when people dick ride and make videos for views or because it's trendy. It was giving people who make comments on videos trying to direct others to subscribe to their channel. Tacky. Jenna has three videos dedicated to Kelly Stamps, excluding the one she's taken down, and all the comments are now turned off. The f <coughs> Oh. The first I enjoyed, I'm the Walmart brand Kelly Stamps, because it was a chance to get to know her more, and she shared personal stories about herself and the differences between her and Kelly, like how she's known for loving tiramisu, but she loves red velvet cake. Kelly loves tiramisu. I love red velvet cake. Now I gotta tap 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 in cause I've tried tiramisu and Miss Stamps girl you owe me a fade cause it was not good. I see why you would like it but it just wasn't hitting like maybe I haven't tried the best or I had them too warm like who knows. But red velvet cake not top tier. But as long as it's you know moist and the cream cheese frosting doesn't taste like cheesecake which i hate it's disgusting 
it pretty much tastes good. The best cake I've ever had though was this chocolate layered cake sold at my old job. I think it might have been a tiramisu cake. I think no, it didn't have a coffee flavor in the icing, but the icing was perfect though. It was moussey and not too sweet, and it had chocolate shavings on the top. <laughs> Real bad. Back to the video though, like it was cool, it seemed normal and was funny, but signs of jealousy and obsession was apparent even there. Kelly has way better fashion sense than I do. My fashion sense is pretty much non-existent, and in all of her videos, she's just looking cute all the time. Towards the end of the video, she mentioned Kelly's subscriber account and if she was like her. If I was like her, I would have 430,000 subscribers. We'll get there someday. And that blurry face vinyl will be replaced with a beautiful silver play button. Which kind of threw me, but I paid it because it went along with her video and kind of pushed people to subscribe if they think she's so much like her, which made sense at the time. But since this new video, she made i decided to revisit that video and her old ones and it seems shorter than i remember like i'm not sure if it was in the same video or if she edited it or if a separate video was maybe pulled down but she had a video where she attempted to dress up like kelly stamps showed us her closet and kind of mimic things kelly would do even her thumbnail was similar to spatula kelly in her other video she would casually mention kelly and her accomplishments as well like okay like what does that have to do with you or this video that was just weird and then at that point it was just yeah it was just getting a little too weird and i wasn't that much interested in her content anymore i subscribed because of her familiarity and wanting to versify my youtube page because i kept seeing the same thing or youtubers i didn't know related to nor wanted to see there was a thread on Twitter on how to correct it by sharing um, black YouTubers we enjoyed and searching for certain things to adjust the algorithm, and it worked. Finally got a hold of other YouTubers like Baby Giant, she's real, funny as fuck, and from my hometown, so if you haven't already, you should subscribe. But yeah, there's more than one kind of black girl, and I wanted my homepage to reflect that, but something didn't feel right in my spirit watching her and i had to unsubscribe lately i've been learning to follow my gut feelings and i don't like being around watching or hearing anything that disturbs my spirit and brings me down because we had different interests i thought i could learn from her but that video was the icing on the cake i'm still stuck on how i don't see the videos i've watched through anymore including that one like is my mind playing tricks on me like i know my memory can be messed up but i didn't think it was down this bad her video titled my honest opinion on kelly stamps proves me correct though she references the video i remember and explains why you don't see videos i thought i've watched through because she's taking them down What's up? I was going to say that I was afraid to make this video, but this has been on my mind for a while, and I want to be honest with all of you. In this video, she reiterates the same point she made in her controversial video, why I stopped watching Kelly Stamps. She lost interest in her content, no variety and predictable. The content doesn't feel new anymore, and it's not her fault at all. I'm just used to it at this point. Sometimes I feel like her content is a little bit monotonous and kind of samey. Her humor doesn't hit like it used to. Also, sometimes I find her dry, sarcastic sense of humor a little too much. Probably because I'm used to it at this point. It doesn't phase me anymore. Some people say they laugh out loud when they watch her videos, and I'm just like, no. No, I don't really do that. Her humor isn't really laugh out loud to me. Like when she makes a little joke or something, I'm like, <laughs> that was kind of fun. It's just getting too used to her personality and her sarcasm. She's jealous of her lifestyle and success and wants to steer away from how it makes her feel inadequate and behind and remove the reminder that she hasn't blossomed into her best self and is missing out. I started doing that really stupid thing where I start comparing myself to other successful YouTubers. I was like, darn it, my new video's not doing well. Molly Burke has a boyfriend. Kelly Stamps is making $12,000 a month. Ah! I'm only seeing the highlight reel on YouTube, but I'm jealous of the highlight reel. I felt like I was behind. Sometimes I still feel like that. 
but with the difference of including how she worked through it, like limiting her social media to content that doesn't make her feel that way. What did I do? I went through my social media, YouTube, Instagram, mostly those two, and I unfollowed all of the people whose content I wasn't enjoying anymore, or they didn't post very often, or seeing their posts or their videos was making me feel bad about myself. Uh, seeking therapy, counting what she's grateful for, and reciting positive affirmations and how she noticed her jealousy and signs that indicated she needed to step away from someone or something for her own well-being. But instead of looking at Kelly Stamp's life and thinking, wow, I wish I had that, I think about what I have right now, like my life. My life is good. You just have to focus on bettering yourself, I suppose, and that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I've been going to therapy, so I can better myself. I felt like this was a fair video. I, I mean, myself, I kind of you know, stuck watching Kelly Stamps for a little bit, which is the same for most people. Like, you know, sometimes the YouTubers you watch or whoever you watch, they don't put out content you're interested in, but you'll still, you know, peep them, view them around. When they start putting out stuff you like again, you, you pick it back up. You know, that's normal. So, like, that was fair to me, especially with her mentioning, you know, how she came about this, what she does. Like, I felt like that was a well-rounded video. So, after all of that, you would think she would just stop there. So, what was the reason for the second video, if not clout? I mean, okay, I felt like, okay, it was more of an update to thoroughly explain why she gets jealous because if you didn't peep, she didn't directly state that she was jealous of Kelly Stamps. She just mentioned she's someone she would compare herself to or a type of YouTuber she would compare herself to. She didn't directly state it. This video is an even more honest opinion because I felt like in that video, I was kind of sugarcoating the section where I talked about jealousy because I didn't want to seem bitter, but today I'm gonna try not to sugarcoat anything and I'm gonna be completely honest. But in the video, on why she stopped watching Kelly Stamps, she said she made a community post if you made a community post, why why make the video? It didn't require a, a video. This did this did not require a video. So if not cloud, then for what? Because I can't even find that community post anymore. Girl, it's gone. So I stopped watching Kelly Stamps. I made a community post about this today because I wasn't sure if I was gonna make a video about it because I know there are gonna be some people who think that I'm just using her name in the title for views. And you can think that if you want, but I just really wanted to talk about this. I'm glad she's taking some accountability and is taking charge of her life and is steering herself in a positive direction and letting others know how hate watching is not an okay thing to do nor is being jealous. A lot of people, including myself, can relate to being jealous of someone and envying their life, feeling like you haven't caught up or where you should be in life in comparison to others. I am glad that she acknowledged that she's jealous of her image since she doesn't know Kelly personally, like she doesn't know her personal life and you never know what people are going through behind closed doors. They could be facing the same struggles as you or worse. But why did Kelly Stamps have to be the focal point of her story, the video, the thumbnail, the title, all about Kelly when this was her time to focus on her and let us into her inner thoughts and feelings? If she hadn't made so many videos about Kelly before, like I feel like people probably would have just paid this and like as other people are saying like this is a great conversation to have because these are thoughts and feelings that we've all gone through it's just the fact that she's made so many videos about kelly and she acknowledges um the views and traction she garners anytime she mentions her name so it's like you already spoke about this in one video the only difference is that you just let us a little bit deeper into your thoughts but those little details you could have saved for the community posts that you made it could have been saved for that. So it's like you had to have one of views for it because, like I said, you're already aware of how associating Kelly's name and image to your videos boosts it up and garners traction to your channel. They're your top videos. You've mentioned it yourself. And I had a feeling it would do well because Kelly's name is in the title and I posted it around the time she was blowing up, but it ended up doing very well in the algorithm. Most of you have discovered my channel through her because I made this video. I'm the Walmart brand Kelly Stamps. Now, as you probably know, I've made a few videos about Kelly Stamps, all of which are some of the most viewed videos on my channel. I made this DIY Kelly Stamps transformation video because I thought it 
movie fun. It was fun. I haven't rewatched it since I posted it because I don't like watching my old videos. Same with the Walmart brand Kelly Stamps video. If that video didn't have almost 30,000 views, I'd probably private it. That's how I feel about a lot of my old videos. If I were to watch them again, which I don't, I would immediately want to private them. Like, no, this is embarrassing. But since that video still does well in the algorithm and it leads a lot of people to my channel, I'm gonna keep it up. I'm glad people think it's entertaining. She already used the first video to differentiate herself from Kelly as if people are still comparing the two almost like she's in competition with her and is losing the race when she should be winning. Like, how does she put out the same content while I have variety and I'm not on the same level she's on? My channel still isn't as big as hers and well received. Yeah, we are slightly similar because we're both awkward black girls and our speech inflections and our sense of humor is slightly similar. But in terms of the content that we make, it's pretty different. She makes videos about minimalism and her lifestyle and introversion and self-improvement. What do I do? I read cringy fanfiction. I do vlogs occasionally. I listen to artists I've never heard before. I share my favorite music. I review bad music. I make- She's not hearing herself and is contradicting herself like we all all do. You recognize how jealousy is so ugly while still operating in it, envying her. When I first found her, I thought she was really relatable to me, but now that she's quote unquote made it and she has like 650,000 subscribers, she's making five figures a month buying like designer clothes or whatever, Chanel bags, that kind of stuff that I don't know about and don't really care. Seeing all that stuff isn't relatable to me. I'm guessing she was iffy about completely cutting off Kelly Stamps because of jealousy because she knew, okay, she knew she, that wasn't healthy, but since she hasn't been able to shake it off, instead she's doubling down on her jealousy and disguising it under the guise of Kelly Stamps no longer being relatable. I'm not saying it's not a valid reason to unsubscribe from someone, but to make a whole dedicated video? Unless someone did a 360 that pushed the narrative of being unrelatable, I don't see how you can make a dedicated video on it because that's the only new point that she really made. She no longer sees herself through Kelly Stamps, which I don't feel requires an announcement, and only wants to watch people on I her like level. I like watching people my age who are sort of on my level still, you know, they're still trying to figure things out. That she can't learn from, instead of inspiring to gain what she admires about Kelly, instead of being jealous, under the guise of liking to watch people who still aren't sure of how to navigate the world. I like to watch YouTubers who don't know what they're doing, quote unquote. They don't have it all figured out yet. Are we watching the same Kelly Stamps? The Kelly who was brave enough to vlog on her own, regardless of others' opinions and public gaze? The Kelly who never claims to know it all but plans out what she wants to accomplish and follows her dreams? You feel like your life is stagnant and you're willingly allowing it to be by not motivating yourself to convert jealousy to inspiration. Watching someone who seemingly has their life all figured out, has everything together, has all of their ducks in a row, you know, they're stacking paper. I can't relate to that. That's not entertaining to me. Lift the stylus off the record player and stop letting that whole scratch. Push on. BT dubs like she mentions a lot about how she's not as stylish as Kelly and this and this and that but Kelly didn't just wake up one day and said yeah I'm a bad bitch she worked her way up to it. like if you've actually been following her I don't remember in what video it was but she actually mentioned how she wanted to change her wardrobe and change her style to become the person that she wanted to be how she no longer wanted to the same way she's feeling like a 12 year old boy. I don't dress my age, like I'm 21, but I dress like a 12 year old boy sometimes. Kelly woke up one day and she no longer wanted to feel like that too. She wanted to do the things that she's doing right now. She planned it all out, updated her wardrobe, updated her mindset. When you're ready and in the space to do so, one day you'll do the same too. That's all that I pretty much have to say about this whole situation. I do want to end this video saying, Jenna, I think you're a very beautiful girl. I actually really love your eyebrows. I have a thing for eyebrows. <laughs> and your eyebrows are so cute. They're so perfectly arched and stuff. It's so cute. <laughs> but yeah, girl, like you're a beautiful girl. There's honestly no need for you to compare yourself to anyone else. Follow in Kelly's foot stamps. Stamps. Footsteps. <laughs>
follow her footsteps and just plan out what you want to do in life and take your time in doing it and you don't need to follow her as a blueprint like you can be your own type of woman your own type of girl like you need to find your own type of beautiful and follow in that you don't have to do exactly what she's doing you don't have to be a girly girl you can be a tomboy you can be this you can be that it's totally fine if you haven't already i i implore you to watch Chrissy. She has videos on like different type of, fem of femininity that you, that you can be and this and this and that. Always uplifting dark skin. Go ahead and watch Chrissy. Go ahead and do that. But um, yeah, just moving forward. Please leave Kelly Stamps alone. Do not make not not now. Do not make not one more video about Kelly Stamps. Unsubscribed, and I don't plan on watching her anymore. It's over now. Enough is enough. <laughs> but yeah girl um yeah have a have a great journey we're all on that journey there really isn't a right way to be in your 20s and you said it girly there really is no right or wrong way to be in your 20s we're all on that journey do you boo <laughs> but yeah that's all that i have for you guys for today thanks for watching if you like what you see and want to see some more make sure you like subscribe and leave a comment um tell me how you feel about all of this and not that this needs to be said but i'll just say it anyways please don't send hate to this girl you can clearly see that she's going through something and that's nothing that she needs i just wanted to give some constructive criticism and just try to push her to um you know bring herself up not everybody can not everyone can push themselves sometimes they just need a little help so yeah that's just all that I wanted to do. Sometimes it's hard watching people your age do more than you, or it seems like they have their life together just because they make six figures a month, or because they have nice clothes and a nice house and a nice significant other. So the best thing to do is just eliminate that from your life, you know? Unsubscribe, unfollow, do what you have to do. It's gone, it's but now I'm back, don't, don't forget, forget it. it. The way I always set the vibe is authentic. When you see the fucking signs, give me credit. The way I'm really on my grind, got him jealous. Keep the stove hot, let the bullshit simmer. My delivery on point like a five-star dinner. How I let these lab rats get on my nerves. It ain't never shit for me to hit them with the works. Hit them with the words, Charlie. Whoa.